Time now for today's perspective. A random one today, as in that is the topic we'll be looking at. As humans, we tend to like certainty and control, or at least the illusion of it. But of course, our world and our lives don't always appear to follow our expectations. So how do we handle randomness? Well, often by turning to superstitions that have absolutely no scientific basis, leading to often irrational behaviour. To bring us his expertise on it all, we're joined by behavioural scientist and professor of psychology, Stuart Weiss. Uh, Mr Weiss, thanks so much for coming in and, and taking time out to talk to us. Now, you're here in Paris, in fact, to take part in a symposium on randomness. And your main question is whether or not humans can live with randomness. I imagine we can and perhaps even like it on small events. But when it comes to the bigger picture, like things like cancer, we'd love to be able to solve that uncertainty. Would I be right? You're, you're right about that. The, uh, I mean, randomness can be fun in some situations. It's, it makes life interesting. But, uh, but we are, are often, and, and of course historically, have uh, not understood how the world works. And very important things, uh, our safety, the weather, and so forth, uh, we, we'd like to know when that's going to happen. And, and so generally i think we are we are looking for more certainty more more predictability in in the world and so uh so you know we can't always get what we want when it comes to that uh, there are gaps and yet we live in such a scientific and such a technological world i mean we literally have so much information at our very own fingertips and yet you say that a lot of irrational behavior persists that if people even get facts to the contrary of their initial beliefs they tend to stick to that first story that's right. I mean, we, we are creatures of what we have learned, what we've grown up with. And so there are certain habits that are hard to break. Uh, and, and it's not until you get to be an adult that you sort of figure out how logic and science works. And by that time, you've probably learned a lot of stuff that isn't very scientific. And so, so it can be difficult to, uh, to shed those, those things. And, and, and it is that, you know, you mentioned the fact that we are so sophisticated and there's so, so much evidence of science all around us every day. Uh, this is, to me, what is so interesting about the topic is that, is that despite that, there, there's sort of a paradoxical thing that despite that, and although we know how to, th you know, sort of figure things out and use logic and science and evidence, we don't always do that. And it's becoming more and more an issue, it seems, with this uh, fake news or lies, as they could all also be called. I mean, I'm thinking even of the US elections, people still believe that the vote was stolen. Exactly. Yes. I mean, unfortunately, many things that are, that should be objectively clear and, and obvious uh, have become statements of your political you know, views. And so so we are I think we are in a very difficult time right now where where uh, where the, the sort of principles of logic and evidence uh, and how we form beliefs uh, has been has been threatened. And I think that we are we are going to have a lot of work to do to try to get past that. Yeah, and maybe narrow down those sources of information and understanding where it's coming from. But one thing that has been around for centuries and maybe, you know, explains how we try and understand our world is this thing of superstitions, of which you're an expert. I'm really curious about this because it is true, the number 13 a lot of people don't like, or black cats. For me, it's odd numbers of magpies. Uh -huh. And I know that logically, if I see one magpie, it doesn't logically mean something bad is going to happen, but I still feel awful and eerie about yes. it. Yeah, th this is this. This, by the way, is a very British uh, superstition. It's not one that we have in the U.S. very often, but but it's a it's a sort of sweet. The the um, yeah, I you know you you your brain can work in two different ways. You know, we we have the emotional learning that we we carry because of the way we were raised, and 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 there's nothing you can do about that. And at the same time, you can know in some sense that this is silly. I, I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, and so, so uh, you know, that's, in a way, that's a good thing. The fact that you have the conflict you know, indicates that you're not one of these people that we're talking about who simply believes what they want to believe. And so, so, uh, so I'm not worried about the people who have this conflict. But it is an interesting thing. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, I don't, most of the superstitions that people hold, like this one, uh, it, not very harmful. Uh, it's fine, and uh, and and it's often something that you can do in private. Other people don't have to know uh, that. You, that no, I tend have. to my, hide my little wave to the magpie, which is apparently the way of dispelling the, the bad omen. There are different ways I hear of doing <laughs> Absolutely. it. Absolutely, some yeah. people turn around, uh, but. 
it's not dangerous, but at the same time, I think I'd quite like to be able to retrain that part of my brain. I mean, is that possible, that emotional intelligence side? I, I mean, there are people who do. There are people who, who, who start to feel so strongly about science and evidence that they say, oh, my goodness, this is silly, and I'm going to toss this off. Uh, but, uh, but I think most importantly is the idea that you, that you embrace science, you br embrace logic, and, and if you've got these little quirks on the side, as long as they're not causing any harm, I mean, there are some superstitions that s theoretically could cause some harm, like, like uh, people who believe in g luck with respect to gambling, you know, that, that if it keeps you at the gambling table longer because you think you, you ha you're going to be lucky, you're wrong about that. You know, that the randomness of the, of the gambling table is, has been all worked out mathematically and, uh, and the house wins. So... So, uh, but, but most of the everyday superstitions that people have, knocking on wood and so forth, you know, harmless. Indeed, and fascinating origins, fascinating origins to some of them, like that number 13 and, and the Last Supper. Uh, but tell me, how easy is it to, to get people, how do we get people over to that scientific side? Well, I mean, this is the problem. This is the issue. I, I think that a lot of it comes from basic education. Also, I think that, I mean, I think that making science fun and interesting and, and stimulating. I mean, the conference that I'm here for this, this weekend is, to me, is a, is a fantastic example of where, you know, the arts and various disciplines are going to be pulled together and, uh, and, and people are going to want to come because it's going to be stimulating and interesting. And I, that's the kind of thing we need to do more of with science. Indeed, I believe you, you've turned the phrase the magic of reality, you know, looking at the wonder that is there. We don't need uh, the superstitions or that kind of further out there idea. We have a magical world. We do, we do. And it's also magical that we can, in a sense, that we can understand it, that we have gotten to the point where we can appreciate the way the planets work and the way the sunset is formed and so forth. And to me, that, that is, uh, there's, there's plenty of beauty in reality. And I have to say, I initially thought, well, I don't want to understand everything. I like a little bit of wonder, but I guess our world is so vast, we'll always wonder. And if nothing yeah. else, COVID-19 gave us a, a very quick introduction to how much we don't control or understand. We've lived with uncertainty of that for so long. Has that changed people's behavior? Yes, I think obviously I, I would think that we've become more cautious. I hope that it's I hope that it has forefronted science and 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 medicine and and you know the fact that I'm able to be here at all uh, is is a, is wonderful and and would not be possible without some tremendous work on the part of scientists. So so uh, it you know it's 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 a wonderful thing. Indeed. So turning to the magic of reality and not the belief. Of a magical world. Mr. Stewart Vice, thanks so much for coming into France 24 and giving us your time.